Criminals are targeting the most vulnerable and destroying families and our citizens. We must better protect them. It is our duty. So I'd like to get down to, to business as to why we are here today to talk about what more we can do. So I would like to turn the tables on the criminals and the organised crime groups who are targeting people at their most vulnerable. They are causing untold misery and harm all for personal greed. But Interpol has a plan. However, to be successful with that plan, we need your help in implementing it. The Secretary-General has already highlighted some excellent examples where we are already working closely and having sustainable impact. We are therefore starting from a strong position. However, there's much more we can do. Interpol is uniquely placed to help our member countries tackle these threats. We are a membership of 192 member countries. We are connected via a secure communications network. So therefore we have the platform. We have a mandate to collect and handle police data on behalf of our member countries. So we have the mandate. We have seconded officers from law enforcement agencies across the world and partners from both the public and the private sector who can provide specialist advice and support. So therefore we have the knowledge and we have the experience. Working with our member countries and partners we can access the specialist capabilities required to tackle the threats. So therefore we have the tools. So what more can we do? How can we be more effective and make an impact? When I say we, I'm referring to everybody in this room, to all our member countries and to all our partners. I've now had the opportunity of 12 months to work for Interpol and to think about this question, about what more we can do. And I'd like to share some observations and some thoughts with you as a director responsible for setting a strategy for the organised emerging crime and what I think we need to do to be more effective. So I've spent over 26 years working on serious and organised crime in various capacities. I like to keep things very simple. When I start an investigation I always go back to the basics and I ask one fundamental question. What is it I am trying to achieve? Human trafficking and people smuggling is organised crime. It is people who are willing to exploit others when they are at the most vulnerable for their own personal greed. To be successful they need to have a business model that works and it is this business model that we need to focus on. So similar to the ambassador, I'd also like to pick up on three principles. And the issues that I've already been spoken about today from the head of NCB earlier, and I'd like to focus on, on those three issues. So number one is improved data collection. It's already been mentioned. We need to understand the threat. Before we can decide on how to tackle the threat, we must understand the threat. And to do this, we need good quality information. So I need you to provide, upload and share that information. Without it, we can't be successful. And it's an area that collectively, across our member countries, we need to improve. Number two, 
better analysis. Once we have the information, we need to make sense of it. And this is the reason that we are creating a criminal analytical work file for human trafficking and people smuggling. Over the past 12 months, you may be aware that we have carried out strategic analysis work across Africa via what's known as the ENACT program. Now, this will be used to better understand the strategic threats and focus the resources we have available. However, we also need to map the criminals and the organised crime groups who are behind the crimes that we see. And the one way to map the organised crime groups is to follow the money. So that takes me on to number three. Better financial analysis and investigations. Money is the motivation behind the crime. Any business, criminal or otherwise, needs money to be successful. Criminals will use the money they earn to reinvest it, to enlarge their activities, and they will use it to bribe others to be successful. They'll bribe those in authority to protect their business interests. Now used legitimately and for good, it brings economic prosperity to a country. However, used for legal activities, it undermines the rule of law, it increases the insecurity and instability in a country, and it creates the misery we see today. So we need to take the incentive out of the crime. We need to recover the assets and we need to return that wealth that people have obtained and return it to the people to help fight the scourge. Targeting the money also provides other criminal justice options. The money rarely remains within a single country and therefore that gives us the opportunity to target it wherever the money should go. And in my view, chasing the money, following the money, going after the assets is one of the most effective ways to tackle the business model that we see here that undermines this activity. So to conclude, we need more and better quality data. We need better analysis of that data. And we need to use our financial investigative capabilities much better. Of course, there are other areas where we can strengthen, but it is my assessment that these are the three areas we need to focus on to get at the heart of the criminals and destroy their operating model. So, once again, I look forward to your contribution and remind you that Interpol as an organisation is the 192 member countries and its partners. It isn't something that sits in Lyon as the Secretariat, it is here today in the room. To be successful, we need you to contribute. So please contribute to the conference. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for listening. Thank you.